Live from WTKR, this is News Channel 3, live at 9. A wonderful audience today. Good morning and welcome to Live at Nine. I'm Jane Gardner. I'm Kurt Williams. A fascinating discussion today. You've been hearing it in the news, the cloning controversy. Well, that is our cover story. We will have the latest on the cloning controversy and a Virginia Tech connection. We'll also be talking this hour about discrimination and how you may be affected by some court rulings recently. An update on a special program you've seen us talk about before on Live at Nine, Animal Empathy, now moving into school. And some high school students having a cook-off for scholarships to learn how to be chefs. Well, as you said, you've heard about it in the, in the news, everything from cloning. Thank you, thank you very much. We're going to switch gears a bit. Do you have a career in cooking? We're going to take you live to a culinary competition. It could be some lucky student's ticket to college. That's next on Live at Night. students are working very hard this morning toward making their dream become a reality. Now they're in the midst of their CCAP finals. That's Careers Through Culinary Arts Program at Norfolk's Johnson & Wales University. And we go live now to the cook-off so you can meet CCAP president and founder Richard Grossman. Good morning, Richard. Good morning. Tell us what's going on behind you. Well, we've got a fabulous competition going with uh, 20 students from schools, from the Tidewater schools, all competing for over $100,000 worth of scholarships. Uh, these students have been working for the year on basic techniques of French cooking, which will lead them into careers in uh, the culinary industry. And from, from high school, they'll either go directly into jobs in the industry or go to schools like here at Johnson & Wales or the Culinary Institute of America, Swiss Hospitality Institute, uh, we even have a student and teacher flying to Paris, uh, not Paris this year, but to London to attend a week at the Cordon Bleu, all expenses paid. Now, what are the different things that they are being judged on, on the, these finals? Uh, we're watching their hands, because uh, this is a, a manual uh, craft. Uh, they're turning vegetables, they're making crepes, uh, they're working on pastry cream, uh, these, are, these are things that they can use in pastry, as well as culinary careers. Uh, and we can tell from their, the way they focus on the work, uh, the degree of accuracy in, that they work, uh, their potential for success in the uh, industry. Oh, that was a good crepe. Did you see how nicely that turned? Oh, that sounds like a lot of pressure. Making crepes and things like that, these are serious things, Richard. We're not talking about... Uh, learning how to work in fast food or something. Or work a microwave. Well, well, you know, fast food is an initial opportunity for young kids to get started. Uh, but uh, most of these students are interested in going further with their culinary career and using their craft for creativity and uh, becoming chefs in fine restaurants. Now, how much does taste factor into to this part of the competition, or is this more just on watching their hands and, and how they're preparing? No, we'll be tasting their pastry creams and their sauces as they're being made, and the judges will uh, mark them both on taste and appearance. It's very important. Taste is, is from my sake, standpoint, is more important than the appearance. Uh, practically anybody can be uh, can learn how to do something, but the in, uh, individual ability to taste and blend flavors uh, is unique and that's what we uh, uh, hope that they have the essence to do this and to create it uh, in the future. It's something that grows with their uh, knowledge of food, uh, but to have the ability to taste and to discern uh, uh, intensities of flavor is something that one is born with and it's then uh, used and developed. Richard, you are quite an accomplished chef. I, I've told you, Kurt, I've used and enjoyed your cookbook at home. How did you get involved with CCAP? You've had a great deal of success with it, haven't you? 
Well, uh, after I wrote my book, At Home with the French Classics, uh, I was traveling around the country uh, promoting it, and I saw that uh, there was a need to inspire young people uh, to actually broaden their palette. And I went into the schools in New York uh, with that idea to uh, offer them a variety of flavors that they hadn't had before. But when I got into the classroom, I saw that many of the students were about to graduate without any knowledge of what they were going to do, uh, many not prepared to go on to college, uh, and some of them were really fascinated by cooking. So when they had the opportunity to, to work in the industry, they became very excited. So my, my initial idea of just broadening a palette of the students uh, turned into careers through culinary arts programs. Now, CCAP, though, stresses more than just cooking skills, though, right? Uh, well, it's through the culinary uh, uh, skills that the students are spotted and, and uh, led into other directions. We have students that are working as managers in restaurants and hotels, uh, but their interests are initially through culinary and everything that you learn in the kitchen from nutrition and, and uh, planning and uh, ordering. Uh, there's a lot that goes into becoming a successful person in the industry. Richard, thank you for sharing with us today. It's a delight to see you again. If you know a young person who's interested in a career through culinary arts... Here's an address you might want to jot down. Careers through culinary arts, 155 West 68th Street, New York, New York, 1023, and the phone number 212-873-2434. Well, from cooking your very best to looking your very best. Do you know how to dress for Sunday? See what... on NewsScan, Council hears from the public concerning a proposed soccer stadium. The Department of Waste Management unveils its new recycling plan. And the 1996 Virginia Beach Man of the Year in Agriculture is named. We'll tell you who he is. Hello everyone and welcome to NewsScan. I'm Helen Kent. Several students recently received awards at the annual Careers Through Culinary Arts Breakfast Program. CCAP began in 1990 to enhance professional opportunities for culinary arts students and link the classroom to the workplace. CCAP coordinators are pleased scholarships will provide students additional opportunities in this progressive field. We have some full scholarships to uh, Johnson & Wales, CIA, some very heavy partial scholarships, so it will, it will certainly help the parents when, in the pocketbook and it will encourage a lot of these students, we hope, to continue their education that may would not have been able to have done so. Richard Grossman, CCAP president, has proven his recipe for success is providing improved classroom instruction and experience with professional mentorship. This is a program to uh, bring the industry, the hospitality industry, <clears throat> to the minds of many students who don't know where they're headed in, in life and if food and cooking interests them and excites them there are many different uh, careers ahead of them the awards of this program benefit both the student and the sponsor CCAP introduces corporate sponsors to the food service professionals of tomorrow they have donated more than five hundred thousand dollars worth of equipment and food products CCAP resources enable students opportunities they may have never had I apply for contests and stuff, and nothing like this ever happens to me, so I'm just real happy. What, what are your future plans? I plan to become an executive chef, and then after I get the ropes and stuff, open my own business. They have awarded nearly $2 million student scholarships from New York to L.A. CCAP has served more than 10,000 students in more than 200 schools. Well, stay with us up next on News Channel 3, a tasteful ending to an unusual contest. We'll whip up the details next. Well, they have stirred and ladled and seasoned their hearts out. Now it's time to find out which of them will take home some exciting culinary scholarships.
students from high schools all over Hampton Roads took part in the annual contest sponsored by CCAP or the Careers and Culinary Arts Program. This is some stiff competition, and the prizes CCAP cooks up are really something else. A couple of examples, a trip overseas to study continental cuisine, and even a four-year $40,000 scholarship to Johnson in Wales. We start working on our cooking a little bit, trip the, overseas, very nice. The one thing nice. that story missed was the food. <laughs> exactly, we'll at least maybe sample that. That's yeah. gonna do it for and the envelope, please. 20 high school students awarded some big-time culinary scholarships today. 13's Joe Flanagan tells us they literally cooked their way to college. And the winner is... This was the scene on Tuesday as high school seniors from seven Hampton Road school districts took their final exam in the CCAP program in the kitchens at Johnson & Wales University. Up for grabs, $150,000 worth of scholarships. Now, one lucky student wins a four-year scholarship to Johnson & Wales worth about $40,000. Lucky student and lucky parents. One by one, they came forward when the awards were announced. Ronice Bryant will study this summer at the Cornell Blue in London. I thought they made a mistake. <laughs> I was excited. I was shocked. Because Jerry Davis's grades were so good, this was the first year an Oscar Smith student received a big CIA scholarship. Well, after graduating from the Culinary Institute of America with my associate's degree, if I really like it, I probably plan to stay there and go and receive my bachelor's degree. And from there, who knows, just continue to do my best and striving to work hard. Jamie Marsteller will be going to the Art Institute in Atlanta, while Emily Gallup was awarded the big $40,000 Johnson & Wales scholarship. My throat closed up. I just started crying. I couldn't stop myself. Um, just utter surprise. I was just overwhelmed. I'm so proud of her. I don't know what to do. And her brother, I mean, all her family is just going to be just so pleased. Big load off. <laughs> My son received a half scholarship to the Swiss Colony yeah. Institute in uh, Connecticut. So really, really fabulous. Fabulous for all. Joe Flanagan, 13 News. Um, Does that mean he's not going to be having to pay for tuition? Is that why it was fabulous? Or? Oh, you know, when, you know, all of these parents <laughs> with empty pockets, scholarships are a good thing. I think it was just a proud father. <laughs> uh -huh, Isn't that terrific? Bet. It is absolutely fabulous. My applause to all absolutely. of them. Absolutely. That's going to do it for our early report tonight on 13 News at 5. Terry on Regina Mobley, up in a half hour at 6. Thanks for the company. Good night. You've been watching 13 News at 5, Hampton Roads' number one 5 o'clock newscast. World News Tonight with Peter Jennings continues. Now, solutions. The problem tonight is that the country needs 2 million more chefs and other very highly skilled restaurant workers. Yes, 2 million more. And in the next eight years, according to the restaurant industry, this is not about burger flippers, by the way, but men and women who actually qualify as chefs or other very skilled professionals, which can, by the way, be fairly well-paid jobs for many people who need jobs. The solution in question tonight marries those two needs. ABC's Deborah Amos begins her report at an awards dinner here in New York City. In this competition, inner-city students are whisking and slicing their way towards scholarships. At 520, it's over. Donated by the best cooking schools in the country. Judged by the best chefs. Use carrots, onions, carrots, onions celery. Onion, uh, onion Ambitions onion. here stirred by this man. Good. It, ne it needs to be reduced more. Chef Richard Grousman is a cookbook author and teacher. Seven years ago, he revolutionized home ec classes in New York City. It was known as a dumping ground for students that hadn't achieved. And uh, I saw that they had, many of them, had a spark in their eye when they were cooking. That spark ignited his program, Careers Through Culinary Arts, known as CCAP. They're exciting kids that would be at risk, giving them an idea of a profession that has a great deal of respect, pays well, and where the kids can identify with doing, I can be a chef, I can cook. As steady as you can get it. So it and they do cook, learning classic French cooking skills. The key to CCAP is bringing professional skills to the classroom. The program has trained 300 teachers and 20,000 students since 1990. They get the skills and confidence they need to get good jobs. 
found that this is something I can do and enjoy and make a living doing. Corporate sponsors donate ingredients and equipment. It's a low-cost way to train entry-level workers, but some students want more. Their ambition is executive chef, manager of a hotel. I mean, their expectations are very high. Five minutes. Expectations encouraged by the competition for scholarships. I got a number 14 for presentation. That reward more than dinner and dessert. These dishes demonstrate attention to detail and complex planning. Those skills took Egbert Gibbs to this New York restaurant away from a different kind of life. Gangs hang out around crowd of people doing the wrong things and uh, until CCAP came in. He won CCAP's first scholarship in 1991. He's now a line cook and aims to be an executive chef. This scholarship for four years is... Goals shared by today's winners. I have a very talented young woman, Stephanie Brown. Who would have thought such dreams could be whipped up from these ingredients? Deborah Amos, ABC News, New York. Well, that is our report on World News Tonight. We hope you are having or will have a nice dinner. We'll be back tomorrow. I'm Peter Jennings. Good night.